In this video, we are going to explore the freeze library. With the help of freeze, we can reduce the lines of code. If I want to say very simply, freeze is a code generator. Dart is awesome, but defining a data model can be tedious. We may have to define a constructor and the properties, override two string, a quality operator and hash code, implement a copy bit method to clone the object, handling deserialization or serialization. Implementing all of this can take tons of lines, which are error prone and affect the readability of your model. Furries tries to fix that by implementing most of this for you and allowing you to focus on the definition of your model. To better understand what I'm saying, please look at these pictures. As you can see, if we want to create a data model without using freeze, we have to write a lot of code, and this approach does not scale. But on the other hand, when we use freeze, as you can see, we don't need to write many functions and our data model remains very small and clean. And it is enough to define the parameters and constructor of the class. Now, let's see how we can use freeze. To use freeze, we must add packages in the dependencies and dev dependencies. In the dependencies, we should add freeze annotation and JSON annotation packages. And in the dev dependencies, we should add the freeze build runner and json serializable packages in the next step let's implement an example in the first step i create a new file named user now inside this file i define a class called user in the next step we have to annotate this class using freeze keyword like this this annotation is what tells Furries to generate code for this class the next step is to define this class with mixins we must apply a mixin with the name of our class prefix by underscore dollar sign. This mixin is what defines the various properties and methods of our object. Now we add a factory method as a constructor with a list of all the properties. When defining a constructor in a first class, we should use the factory keyword. So I'm going to define a constructor for the user class with the factory keyword. In this class, we will have three properties called first name, last name, and a boolean variable called is active. Freeze has an interesting feature that we can set the initial value for a property using the default annotation. For example, we can set an initial value of false for this is active property using the default annotation. The parameters of this constructor will be the list of all properties that this class contains. We have now created our constructor. Next, we want to implement from JSON and to JSON methods. In the freeze package, from JSON and to JSON will not be generated, but it knows what JSON serializable is. To implement the from JSON method, it is enough to create a factory constructor called from JSON. User.fromJSON is specifically designed to create user instance from a JSON map. It takes the JSON map as input and extracts the required values, such as first name, last name, and is active to initialize the properties of the user object. Now it's time to generate the codes, but before we want to generate something, we have to somehow tell Freeze which files contents it should generate. To do this, we must use the part keyword at the beginning of the file and write the name of the file that we want to generate. Just note that the file name must be exactly the same as the current file name and at the end of it, we have to add dot .freeze like this. This lines of code generates all the codes and methods related to the Freeze. As I said, we use the JSON serializable package to generate the from JSON and to JSON methods. So we must write the name of the file to be generated at the beginning of the file using the part keyword, like freeze. For JSON serializable, we must write .g at the end of the name, like this. And let me also say that in order to generate the to JSON method, it is not necessary to define the factory constructor like from JSON. And the JSON serializable package generates to JSON automatically. Now it's time to generate codes. For this, we have to enter this command in the terminal, and if there is no problem, files will be generated after the command is fully executed. As you can see, the codes were successfully generated. And now we can use the created methods. For example, I want to use the from JSON method. Well, as you know, this method takes a map as input and then it converts this map into a user object. 
So first I define a map here and then I define an instance of user and now I convert this map into a user object using the formJSON method in the user class. Now we can print the user object by using the toString method which was generated by freeze. If there was no freeze, we would have to write this toString method manually which takes a lot of time. And if we run the application, we will see in the console that the user object has been printed and JSON has been correctly converted to user object. The next method I want to use is the toJSON method. This method works exactly the opposite of from JSON and instead of converting a map into a user object, it converts user object into a map. To do this, first I define a user object now I convert the user to a map using the toJSON method and finally I print the map so that we can see the result in the console. As you can see, it has been converted to map correctly. This method works exactly opposite from JSON. In the next step, I want to use the copy with method. This method is used to clone an object with different values. For example, I create a user object now I want to make a clone of this object and change only its first name. As I said, we use the copy with method and change the value of the property we want like this. And finally, I'm going to print the user number one and the user number two objects so that we can see the differences. As you can see, the two objects are exactly the same and differences only in the first name property. And the last thing I want to check is the compression of two objects so that we can understand whether the two objects are equal or not. If we want to do this without using freeze, it will take a lot of time. But freeze implement this method in classes and now it is enough to check using equality operation like this. As you can see, these two objects are not equal. And if we change first name, we see that true is returned which means that these two objects are equal. In this video, I tried to give overview of Freeze. Freeze has other features that you can check from its document. I hope you enjoyed this video.